Today, friends, we are reviewing literally the lightest, lightest. We're afraid. We're... <laughs> Today, friends, we are reviewing literally the lightest hunting rifle. Just period. That's it. This is the Howa 1500 Super Light, and it is super light. It weighs four pounds, seven ounces, at least that's what they say on the sticker, that has a carbon fiber background. Look at that on a sticker. That's high value. It feels like we're shooting with cardboard. It feels like I could break this over my knee. The, if I were to put a dry spaghetti noodle up here, you wouldn't be able to see the barrel behind it. Yeah, that is a thin, thin barrel. I'm curious to see how this thing shoots, but first, let's see if they're living up to their promises. I brought my scale out here. It says four pounds, seven ounces, but I just keep seeing companies saying a weight and then I weigh it and it's not that weight. Four pounds, 12 ounces and five eighths. It says four pounds, seven ounces. That's like, we're nearer to half of a pound different. I uh, mean, we're like 0.4 pounds different. That's a lot. Let's look in the box. Is there any, there's no asterisk anywhere on the ad. Did they just not talk with a lawyer? Like you have to tell us, no, I don't see any looking at the little, this doesn't say anything about weight. Let's get on their website. It just drives me nuts when they do this stuff. All right, I just emailed Legacy Sports Marketing. We're gonna see, hopefully, get an answer by the end of the video what exactly happened there. Now, here's the other thing. One way that manufacturers are going to cheat on the weight is if they reduce the length of pull. So you're kind of huddled up in there, right? Generally, we're gonna have a 13 and a half inch length of pull. I have not even measured this yet. Let's see where we are. 13 and a quarter inch length of pull. So no big deal at all. It might be a little bit nice to get a little bit more from that tiny, tiny little recoil pad, but let's scope this thing up and get it shooting. Lay out some scopes. All right. Um, ooh, you know what? Maybe I already know. Like, how ridiculous would it be to put this giant Arkin just mounted like Sputnik on top of that thing? Yeah, baby, that's looking good. I think we're gonna go with this guy. This is the Leupold VX3 HD, I believe. This is a second focal plane optic, which I think would be very fitting for this. So second focal plane means that when you zoom in, the reticle doesn't get bigger and smaller with it. And so the hash marks are gonna be off. You can't hold for wind using those and stuff. Given how tiny this barrel profile is, I don't can't imagine choosing this as a long range rifle. So I think something light like this would be a nice match. These, by the way, are turret tags, these little quick adjust yardage stickers. Once you know your dope on, on everything, have it settled in, you have these quick adjust yardage stickers. So you can just go to 200 yards or whatever, instead of like needing to futz with your app while you're trying to hunt. I'm excited to see this if this thing can shoot. Now, I'm not expecting this to be your precision rifle that you're gonna wanna pick as your thousand yard gun. But if it can hold a decent group, good enough for hunting, man, what a lightweight, awesome little tool to be taking out with you. We have three different types of ammo. We got Federal Premium, Sig Elite Hunter, and Hornady Match. If anything goes wrong, we can try a little bit of burger as well to see what kind of groups we get. We're gonna shoot three groups with each. Get that, and then whatever the best one is, we'll shoot two more groups so that we can get a decent idea of what kind of accuracy we're looking at. That gun has quite a bit more recoil than any 6.5 grain more. It feels like you're shooting, not a, not a 12 gauge, maybe like a 20 gauge shotgun. What's up guys, Cam Man Garrett here. Just wanted to update you, after we filmed this video, we actually put a backstop pad on the gun, and even though it's a bigger pad, we ended up cutting down on the weight, 
and we got back some of that cheated length of pull um, from having that super thin recoil pad. So pretty cool. It's also loud. With the shorter barrel, it, it really feels loud. blasty. Yeah. That was a 4.88 inch group. Let that sink in. <laughs> 4.88 inch. Anytime we get a group that bad, I'm gonna wanna go through all the scope screws, action screws, make sure everything's tight. We're just gonna check this. Could be that it just really, really, really hates that ammo, but I don't know that I've really seen a gun that will go from a five inch group to a half inch group. And so I'm definitely concerned that something is up here. Okay, well, that was 1.3 inches apart. See, that barrel is hot right now. Is it heating up by the third shot? Do we need to let it cool after two shots? We'll see. Okay, 1.3 inches. That is wild. We just went from a five inch group to a 1.3 inch group. I don't think I have ever seen that reviewing another gun. So I wonder if what we're seeing is this gun is just super ammo picky. We'll see what happens. I wanna do more testing for sure. At this point in the review, I, I'm a little bit baffled. I mentioned earlier, I, I've, I've never seen a gun that's shooting you know, three plus inches that then goes to sub MOA. Now, we never quite got to, on average, shooting sub MOA, but three groups in a row with the Burger were all 1.2, like 1.22, 1.24, and 1.27. So very consistent, and that's a huntable load. I'm okay with that, you know, knowing the limits. But I just have a hard time believing that these really were shooting five inch groups with the Federal and the Hornady. So I'm gonna go back to them now and just see if something changed. At one point I did get a little quarter turn on the action screws when we were getting crazy accuracy. So I just wanna see if that really is the case that it was shooting that bad. Uh, interesting, 0 0.4. Let's see if that was just luck. Uh, it just produced a 0 0.57 inch group. 0 0.57. I mean, hey, it could be lucky. You shoot enough groups, some three are gonna land together, but we're gonna go back to it. If that is the case, that it suddenly is shooting this well, then um, I guess it was, I mean, I really got a quarter turn out of that action screw. That's the only thing that has changed in this gun as we've done this testing. We're letting it cool completely, 10 minutes each time. I don't think I went from being a five minute shooter to a half minute shooter. <laughs> So we'll see. An anomaly, or was it the action screw? Yeah, 1.85 inches, which those of you, if you're wondering like, well, how did I go from half to 
1.85, I mean, these are three shot groups. And so that's why we're shooting multiple of them is, you know, sometimes you get lucky and three land close to each other. Given that though, the one that I'm liking is the burger. It was very consistent at 1.2. For a lot of hunts, that's gonna be good enough. You know the rule of backfire, if it don't feed, it don't hunt. We've gotta make sure it feeds. We've been shooting quite a lot with it already, and I have yet to have any issue whatsoever. The thing that I have not tested is sometimes putting them on weird angles. We'll get them to kind of catch up. Oops, I just went slow there. Let's see if this, yeah, no problems. And then Garrett's favorite part. Actions frequently work great when they're factory new, but what happens when you're in the mountains and she gets a little bit dirty? Oh yeah, oh, she feels good. Get everything. All right, we got our dirty action. We've been going around the mountains for a couple of weeks. Now let's see how this thing rolls. Uh, it's not great. It's not like the Socko that was just like, oh, bring it, nice. give me 10 pounds of, of mud and it was still going. But honestly, for being that dirty, that runs pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. One interesting part while we're talking about the action and feeding, this has a three position safety. I wanna show you how that works. So it's right here. When I'll, always, you know, it's pushed to fire, right? If you're in the forward position, it's going to fire. Well, this one has the unique feature, like not that many actions right now, that you see there were two clicks coming back. And so when we're in the rear position, we can't lift the bolt and we can't pull the trigger. Or we can move the trigger, actually, it just won't uh, do anything. Then we can go one position forward, and in this position, we still can't pull the trigger, but we can now lift the bolt to get it out. And then when we go to the third position, then we're on fire. Okay, Garrett, I, I called Legacy Sports on the way here and asked them about this four pounds, seven ounces. Now make no mistake, this rifle is incredibly light, right? Like it's insanely light when you pick it up and I love that. But I just wanna know what the deal was. So they said it is four pounds, seven ounces if you remove the factory Picatinny rail and you take out the magazine what? of the rifle. Who would ever do that <laughs> or use the gun that way? So if you use your rifle with no scope and no more ammo in there, then it's four pounds, seven ounces. To conclude the Hawa 1500 Superlight, what do we think about this gun? It's like you're driving a special purpose vehicle right? It's like if you go to all the car dealerships and you're looking for your commuter and then the, the salesman says, well, why don't you try this Polaris Razor as your, as your commuter? You get in it and you say, this is a terrible car, terrible car. It doesn't suit my needs at all. And I think that's what's going to happen to a lot of the people that get the Howa 1500 Superlight. If you got it for your general purpose, everything rifle, probably not a good idea. This is a special purpose rifle. And if you use it for that special purpose, I actually really like this thing. I think this is definitely gonna come with me on some hunts. Again, a tree stand hunt, you're following hounds and you're hiking all the way through the mountains and stuff, fantastic. It's ammo picky. It's not fun to shoot at the range because it heats up so fast. You're, I mean, we've been here since 6 a.m. and it's now 10 a.m. just trying to get these groups because you got to let it give it 10 minutes to cool down every time. Not fun for a range gun. But if you're using it for what it's built for, a very lightweight rifle, just a handy little tool, I kind of love it. Howa 1500, they did everything to get their, their weight down on this and it, they still made it a very usable rifle. One that I think is going to come with me in the woods.